Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 26 of our ratio analysis video series and in this installment we learn all about financial leverage. In simple terms, financial leverage indicates how a business is dependent on debt that it has issued and how the company is using the debt as a part of its financing strategy. So in this tutorial, we basically have four things to discuss. Number one, understand what financial leverage actually means. Number two, its formulas and calculations. Number three, we'll calculate financial leverage of Colgate. And number four, we'll look at its interpretations and use. But before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder, we will be needing all the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so from the link in the description box below. And to keep yourself updated with investment banking and financial modeling concepts, please do subscribe to our channel Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is financial leverage? Financial leverage is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the business risk category. In our earlier video, we discussed about operating leverages and in this video, we'll be discussing about financial leverage. What was operating leverage? Basically, the operating leverage means that uh, how the investment in fixed assets, you know, affected the operating profit of the uh, company. So how it had the leveraged impact on the operating profit. So we discussed this in the last video in pretty much detail. So we said operating profit is the EBIT. And uh, because if there is a higher investment in fixed cost, the operating profit will benefit from it accordingly if the sales increase. So this was operating leverage. You can go ahead and look at the previous discussions which we had all about operating leverage. Let's now discuss what financial leverage is. Similar to the operating leverage where we said fixed cost affects the operating profit. Here financial leverage means how basically debt. So instead of fixed cost, think of it as debt. The company finances its assets using either the equity capital that it has or it raises funds from the bank, right? Via debt. So how debt impacts your net income will be called as financial leverage. How sensitive your net income becomes with the usage of debt. Think of leverage, the word, you know, leverage, by the way, is commonly used to refer, you know, how the capital structure of the company looks like. Financial leverage would essentially mean how the debt of the company affects the net income at the bottom line level. That's what it means. So let us now look at uh, the example of financial leverage and maybe things will become clearer once we discuss that in a bit more deep. Here I have the example. We, we discussed this in the operating leverage. We had two companies, company A and company B. One was a high fixed cost and low variable cost and the other one was low fixed cost and high variable cost company. This was the operating leverage example. I'll continue with the same example so that uh, you know, at the end, we get a holistic picture of how this overall flow works. Let's say the capital structure of company A. Okay, Let's say the capital structure of company A. They have raised, let's say, $2 million. Okay, so $200,000. Okay. So this is the debt of the company. And let's say equity is, let's say, $500,000. Okay, so this is the overall capital structure of company A. Okay. And let's say the capital structure of company B looks something like this. They have not raised any debt altogether. And uh, let's say company B has uh, equity investment of 500,000. So since let's assume that since this was a low fixed cost business, low, they haven't invested much in the low, uh, I mean, they haven't invested much in the fixed assets. So they don't require much capital. But here they have invested heavily in the fixed assets. So they require more capital, by the way. So that's why maybe the debt raises all because of that. Now we will see how these two positions of company A and company B kind of affect the net income of the company, right? Until now, we were clear about the earnings before interest in taxes. That's the operating profit. After this comes the interest expense, okay? In the income state. Let's assume that the interest rate is 5%. So the interest expense will be how much? This will be 2 million multiplied by 5%. 
okay so that will come out to be 100000 all right so this will be your interest expense so after interest expense is deducted we get ebt earnings before taxes okay so this is 610 minus 100 and uh, after this will be the taxes so let's say taxes is at the rate of 20% 20% of 510000 so this comes out to be 102000 so finally we get the net income okay so this is ebt minus taxes okay so this is our net income because of the debt the only item that has added is the interest expense all right let's see you know how this is when the total number of sales units are are kind of increased from 18000 to 20000 so let's say if that increases how does the net income look like so the net income jumps from 408000 to 480000 okay so even though the number of sales units were more the interest expense because of that will be same because you know at the end of the day debt doesn't change like this you know it doesn't depend on the number of sales units so uh, we get this number that is net income all right let's now look at how it is for company b okay so interest expense for company b will be how much company b says they haven't raised any debt interest expense will be zero what will be the ebt the earnings before taxes this will be 600000 minus 6 minus zero what will be the taxes assuming it's at the same 20% level so this is 20% okay and uh, what is the final profit so the profit as we can see uh, in, in this case this is a bit lower company a because they are paying interest expense on the debt and when we look at company b the net income is higher because they have not paid any interest expense because of zero debt altogether so this is what financial leverage does you know, financial leverage ultimately reduces your net income now as we discussed in the operating leverage we said that there's this term called degree of operating leverage which which actually calculates and finds out how sensitive your ebit or the operating profit is vis-a-vis -vis changes in sales now there is another term called as degree of financial leverage so here is the formula for degree of financial leverage the degree of financial leverage means how sensitive uh, your net income is to the changes in EBIT. So it's defined as percentage change in net income divided by percentage change in EBIT. This is called as degree of financial leverage. Okay. Let's calculate that degree of financial leverage. It's basically percentage change in net income divided by percentage change in EBIT. Okay. So we'll calculate degree of financial leverage for both the companies. So this will give us an idea of how sensitive, uh, it, how sensitive you know uh, the income statement, net income is because of the presence of debt. Okay, because if you consider items between EBIT and net income, there's only one item that is present, that is uh, the debt, right? And tax is basically at flat at twenty percent. So there's no uh, nothing additional apart from the taxes and that interest expense taxes flat at 20 percent interest expense is the only item that changes because of the presence of debt any fluctuations between you know how sensitive this net income is as compared to ebit will be called as degree of financial leverage so let's see how this is percentage change in net income all right so percentage change in net income is 480 divided by 408 minus 1 so this comes out to be 17.8 percent and we have already calculated percentage change in EBIT earlier that was 700 divided by 610000 minus 1 so that is 14.71 percent so what is the degree of financial leverage percentage change in net income divided by your percentage change in EBIT so that comes out to be how much this is basically 1.196. This is your degree of financial leverage. Let us now calculate the degree of financial leverage for company B here. Okay, so I'll just copy this uh, 
over all these formulas here so that we get all the values associated with degree of financial leverage. What do we get here? The degree of financial leverage, as you can see here, it is one. What does that one means? That, you know, percentage change in net income is 13.3%, 33%. And the percentage change in EBIT is also 13.33%. So basically what it means is that debt has zero impact, zero impact on the changes in net income. But if you look at this one, because of the debt, that there is a significant change in the net income. Okay, so that's how you know you can go ahead and interpret the degree of financial leverages. So usually, uh, where which type of companies will find the higher degree of financial leverage? Of course, the ones which are highly capital intensive businesses, which uh, raise capital in order to um, finance their assets. So think of aerospace, uh, think of a capital goods sector, think of energy utility companies. You know, these are the ones which should ideally have higher degree of financial leverage. However, you know, think of those which do not depend on the uh, long term assets, uh, heavy investments in fixed assets. They might have a smaller degree of financial leverage because they might not need much of debt altogether. That's the overall interpretations of the degree of financial leverage. Let's now look at uh, how we can calculate the degree of financial leverage in the case of Colgate. Here is the income statement of Colgate and I want you to scroll down to row number 82. We'll be calculating the degree of financial leverage and uh, the formula you remember was percentage change in net income divided by percentage change in EBIT. We have already calculated the percentage change in EBIT here from our previous calculations of operating leverage. So we have done that already. Here is the uh, row where we can calculate percentage change in net income. Okay, so once we have these numbers, we should be able to find the degree of operate, financial leverage. So let's do that. Percentage change in net income will be, net income is here, 2174 divided by 2586 minus one. So this will give us the percentage change in net income and we'll copy and paste it for all the other years too. So these are the percentage change in net income. Let's now find out the degree of operate financial leverage by uh, this in the numerator and operating profit in the denominator. So let's do that. Percentage change in net income divided by percentage change in EBIT. Okay, so this is our financial leverage. So how do we interpret this? So basically this number is uh, kind of very difficult to interpret because of the fact that uh, net income has fluctuated vastly from positive to negative to a number which is 0.32 and then 1.41. So I won't be uh, you know reading much into this financial leverage because of the fact that you know the profit numbers have been fluctuating widely. That's how we can you know say about uh, Colgate as such in this. So I hope you understood what financial leverage is and how you calculate it and its interpretations. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section below. And we come up with very interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notifications about our latest videos as soon as we release them. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.